Hey gang, and welcome back. Just so you know, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, one word, at flipsidegaming.com to get 10% off orders $10 or more. You can also use the promo code at Original Magic Art on everything except for paintings. And finally, you can use the code at mtg.multizone.ca to get 10% off of your orders of singles. Using the code will help you save some money and help out the channel at the same time. Hey gang, and welcome back. We have another game from the Jersey Boys, and this week, Trevor is playing Zergo, keeping Marsh Flats, Mirage Mirror, Shambling Vents, Chromatic Lantern, and Sword of Body in Mind. Mike is playing his now defunct Cigarda deck, keeping a Forest, a Plains, Banishing Light, Ghostly Prison, Kadama's Reach, and Satyr Enchanter. I'm rocking the Duke of Dumpsters to Ready, keeping Chaos Warp, Three Mountains, Wheel of Fortune, Burnished Heart, and Blasphemous Act. Matt is playing his Scion of the Ur Dragon, keeping a Sarkin Fireblood, Forest, Watery Grave, Stomping Ground, Polluted Delta, and Scalding Tarn. I win the die roll and start us off. I play a Mountain and pass. Mike plays a Forest, passing to Trevor. Trevor plays a Tap Shambling Vents. Matt plays a Scalding Tarn, cracking it and going to find a land while passing. I play a Mountain and pass. Mike plays a Plains. Trevor plays and cracks his Marsh Flats as his land for turn. He shortcuts, casting his Swiftfoot Boots before finding his land and passing to Matt. Matt's still searching at this point and finds his Blood Crypt and starts his turn. He plays a Polluted Delta, cracking it and taking one and passing. I play a Thespian Stage and drop Burnished Heart. For Mike's turn, he plays another Forest and casts Kadama's Reach finding a plains for his hand and for the field. Trevor plays an isolated chapel and pays three for chromatic lantern before passing. Matt plays a command tower and casts Sark and Fireblood. He upticks the walker, discarding Udvara Hellkite and drawing a card. I play a mountain and I pass. Mike plays a canopy vista which comes in and he swaps his land to match the style of the card. He pays 3 to cast a Farhaven Elf, keeping that ramp train going. Trevor plays a Badlands for turn, and Trevor's upset that I didn't attack Sarkin with my heart. He casts Mirage Mirror and passes to Matt. Matt plays a Stomping Grounds, taking 2 and upticks Sarkin. He adds 2 mana for dragons to his pool, and he casts his Commander. At the end of turn, I crack the heart for 2 mountains. I play a Buried Rune in my turn, and tapping 5 for a Gilded Lotus, and then tap another 2 for a Topper Orb, passing to Mike. Mike plays a Plains and casts Ghostly Prison to hopefully make Matt not attack him. Trevor activates his Mirror to become a copy of my Gilded Lotus, and plays a Sacred Foundry untapped, losing 2 life. He casts Outpost Siege, naming Khans, and then a Sword of Body and Mind, passing. Matt plays a Swamp and casts a Dragon Speaker Shaman. He upticks Sarkin, discarding a forest to draw a card. At the end of turn, I use Chaos Warp to shuffle away Sarkin into Matt's library. He shuffles up and reveals a Bloodstained Mire. You're welcome, Matt. Matt cracks it and goes to find a land. I play a Ghost Quarter for turn and cast Metal Worker. I then pass to Mike. Mike pays 3 in his main phase, casting a Satyr Enchanter, and passes. Trevor exiles Wheel of Fortune to his outpost trigger, and draws for turn. He plays a Temple of Triumph, scrying one, and keeping it on top. He then casts the Wheel, and I show off that we're twinsies, having a wheel in my hand, and Mike responds by casting Crib Swap, targeting the Scion. Matt activates Scion's ability, and goes to find a dragon. He bends Silumgar the Drifting Death, who is hexproof and fizzles the removal spell. We then all wheel our hands and draw seven, and Trevor then passes. Matt plays another Swamp for turn, and recasts Sarkin Fireblood again because he'd just redrawn it. He upticks the Walker to add some mana, and passes to me. I play a Mountain and tap Metalworker, revealing five cards and gaining ten colorless. I then cast the Thran Dynamo, Silent Arbiter, Voltaic Key, 
and mana vault that I just revealed. I use the key to untap my metalworker, and pain 4 bring out the Duke of Dumpsters to ready. I uptick my walker, discarding 2 and drawing 2, and passing a mic. Mike drops a forest and uses Return to Dust in his main phase. He targets my key and my metalworker, and I tap the metalworker to reveal 3 more artifacts. I flash in a shimmer mirror and a sculpting steel who comes in as a copy of metalworker. The artifacts are then exiled, and Mike then drops a ranger's path onto the stack and goes to find two forests, passing turn. Trevor exiles a bloodstained mire to the outpost and draws, playing the mire for his land for turn. He pays 5 for a stone hewer giant and moves the swiftfoot boots onto the giant. Moving to combat, the stone hewer goes at Doretti and I declare blocks with my shimmer mirror. Trevor doesn't activate the stone hewer's ability surprisingly, and the shimmer mirror simply dies, and Trevor passes. Matt draws and plays a reflecting pool. He plays Dragon Tempest and upticks Sarkin for 2 dragon mana. He's able to pay only 4 for the Steel Hellkite, and thankfully the Topra Orb is doing some work against the Tempest triggers. Matt then pays 2 to activate Scion, and bins the Ur-Dragon, which is just super duper. He swings his commander at me for 10, and gets the Ur-Dragon's trigger, drawing a card, and then playing a permanent, with Bladewing the Risen hitting the field. Once again, the Topra Orb is proving its worth by denying Matt the triggers. Matt then passes, and at the end of turn, I sacrifice Buried Ruin to return Burnished Heart to my hand. I tap my Metal Worker, revealing my hand to make 6 mana. I cast my Burnished Heart, and crack it as it enters, finding 2 more mountains. I uptick to ready, discarding 2, and drawing 2. I then resolve Chandra Flamecaller, and use her Zillar ability to discard my hand, drawing that many plus 1. I then cast my own Steel Hellkite, because Matt made it look so good, and I pass to Mike. Mike casts Harmonize in his main phase, drawing some cards. He casts a Fleece Main Lion, and passes turn. At the end of turn, Trevor activates the Stone Hewer to find an equipment card. He grabs Helm of the Host, and attaches it to the Stone Hewer. Trevor exiles an Indomitable Archangel to his Outpost Trigger, and draws for turn. He casts the Angel in his main phase, and has the Mirror become a copy of my Gilded Lotus. He then taps some mana for Hammer of Nazan, and equips it onto the Angel as it enters. He then drops Trailblazer's boots, and puts them onto the Angel, and pays to put the Swiftfoot boots onto the Angel as well, but forgets to move them over. Moving to combat, he makes a new Stone Hewer Giant token, and he swings the Archangel at Chandra, taking her out. Matt plays a Misty Rainforce as his land for turn, and cracks it to find the appropriate breeding pool, taking two life loss to have it come in untapped. He casts Buried Alive in his main phase, finding Balefire Dragon, Dragonlord Culligan, and Dragonlord Dramoka. Matt then casts Patriarch's Bidding, and the whole table is thankful once again for the Topra Orb. Matt chooses Dragons, Trevor chooses Elf, Mike chooses Angels, and I choose Elk. We get the appropriately chosen creatures back, and moving to combat, Matt swings the Balefire Dragon at Trevor. This triggers the Udvara Hellkite on attack, gaining Matt another Dragon token. With the Balefire connecting, all of Trevor's creatures take 6 damage, but the Angel gets to survive thanks to the Hammer granting Indestructible. Matt also remembers to use the Ur-Dragon's trigger, drawing a card and playing a Marsh Flats as his permanent. Matt then cracks it to find a land, and I crack my heart to find two more mountains. Matt then upticks Sarkin, using the ability of discarding a card and drawing a card. I draw for turn and uptick to ready, discarding more lands and drawing two more. I pass to Mike, and at the end of my turn, Mike makes the Fleece Main Lion monstrous. Mike plays an old framed Brushland as a land drop for turn, and he casts Rishkar's Expertise, drawing four cards from the Fleece Main Lion's power. He casts Primal Command from it for free, and chooses to tutor for a creature card and shuffle my graveyard into my library. He finds an Avon Mind Sensor, 
Mike then casts a Cultivate and passes it to Trevor. Trevor exiles his own Gilded Lotus to the Outpost Siege, and maybe he'll stop copying my copy now. He plays an Arid Mesa for his land for turn, and has the mirror become a copy of Balefire Dragon. He equips both pair of boots to the Mirage Mirror, and then the Sword of Body and Mind. He swings the mirrored copy of the dragon at Matt, dealing 8 damage, and Trevor then gains a 2-2 wolf token, and mills Matt for 10. He then resolves the Balefire trigger, and most of the dragons die. Trevor then passes, and the equipment falls off the mirror. Matt plays Mana Confluence as his land for turn, and drops the mana doubling Mirari's wake. Matt then upticks Sarkin, making 2 more mana, and pays enough for Scion to rejoin the party. Matt then activates the Scion, and Mike flashes in Avon Mind Sensor. Matt then looks at his top 4 instead, and bins a Molten Steel Dragon. Heading to combat, Matt swings the Ur Dragon at Mike, and loses 1 life to the Mana Confluence to pay the 2 for Ghostly Prison. Matt also gets to draw a card and put it at a permanent, which he does, dropping a Chromatic Lantern, and Mike then takes 10. I draw for turn, and cast my second Chandra, Chandra Torch of Defiance. I uptick her, exiling Scrap Mastery, which would be a really bad scene for me if I cast it now. I leave it to exile, dealing 2 to my opponents. I then uptick to ready, discarding 2, and drawing 2 more. I then cast a Planar Bridge, and I pass to Mike. Mike plays a Plains, and brings up Bastion Protector. He then drops his commander, Sigarda, in his main phase, making her really hard to deal with since she can't be sacrificed and she's indestructible, before passing turn. During his upkeep, Trevor exiles Sword of Feast and Famine to the Outpost Siege, and he has the mirror become a copy of Marari's Wake. This lets him tap only 4 lands to drop an Avacyn Angel of Hope, and basically make his board a nightmare to deal with. He then casts and equips the Sword of Feast and Famine, the Swiftfoot Boots, and the Trailblazer Boots to the Indomitable Archangel. Moving to combat, he swings her at me for 10. I discard all his dust as Trevor untaps his lands. In his second main phase, Trevor moves the Swiftfoot Boots to Avacyn, and then drops Chandra Flamecaller, but the zombie version. He uses her ability, discarding his hand and drawing that many plus one. He then taps three lands for Phyrexian Rebirth. Matt passes priority, and I respond by activating my planar bridge, realizing immediately that I probably won't get what I want because of the Avon Mind Sensor. I grab Karn, which would have been fantastic if Trevor's board wasn't hexproofed and indestructible. Unfortunately, the board gets wiped, and Trevor gets a 10-10 horror artifact creature. He then casts a Return to Dust, and exiles my Planar Bridge and Matt's Marari's Wake. Matt casts the Flavorful Wind Dragon's Horde in his main phase, and he uses Sarkin's Ultimate to make some dragons. He then passes. I lose one life to the Mana Vault being tapped, and draw for turn. I pop to Ready's Ultimate, gaining his Emblem, but with nothing really to abuse it with. I then uptick Chandra, exiling a Karn, Sign of Urza, who I cast. I in turn uptick the Karn I just cast, hoping to get something good, but Mike gives me 4 to the heroes. Thanks, Mike. I drop an Arcbound Ravager, and sacrifice Thran Dynamo and the Mana Vault to the Ravager, returning them to the end of field as I pass turn. Mike brings out a Silent Sentinel in his main phase, and he heads to combat. He swings the Garda at Karn for 5, dropping the Walker to 1. Trevor exiles Steel Shaper's Gift to the Outpost Siege, and uses Bajuka Bog to exile my graveyard. He casts the Gift to go and find Inquisitor's Flail, and he casts it and equips it onto Avacyn. And then moves his two swords and the Trailblazer boots onto the Angel. Moving to combat, Avacyn heads at Matt, who connects and takes him out, and Trevor gets to untap his lands. Trevor then uses Chandra's zero ability in his main phase, discarding his hand and drawing that many plus one. 
He then casts Aurelia and passes turn. At the end of his second main phase, I sacrifice more artifacts to the Ravager, bringing them back at the end of turn. I draw for turn and uptick Chandra, exiling Paradox Engine, which I cast. I then uptick Doretti, discarding two and drawing two and finding Heart Garbage, but I guess that's what you get from the Duke of Dumpsters. I then uptick Karn, hoping for something, and have Mike pick the card once more, and naturally I get a mountain. I then pass to Mike. Mike plays Terramorphic Expands, a staple in all of Mike's decks. He cracks it for a forest, and swings the Silent Sentinel. This lets him bring back an enchantment, and Mike returns Oblivion Ring, and he exiles Aurelia with it, while I take four. Mike then casts Hunting Wild in his second main phase, grabbing two forests and passing to Trevor. Trevor exiles Command Tower to the Outpost Siege, and uses Chandra's ability to discard his hand and draw that many plus one. He finds an Anguished Unmaking, and casts it to exile the Oblivion Ring, getting back to his Aurelia. We realize we're all dead at this point to Aurelia and the Helm, and scoop it up to Trevor. Game review time. Oh wow, that sounds bad. We're gonna cut to the chase, and I'm just gonna focus on my misplays this game. Looking back on it now, I think actually casting the Scrap Mastery that I'd exiled from Chandra would have probably been a better move. It would have dealt with a lot of Trevor's more troublesome artifacts that were giving things indestructible and protection. I could have then easily brought stuff back with Dirty's minus two, since using his ultimate in the end actually did nothing for me. I was also too focused on protecting my own stuff that I didn't even think about attacking with the Steel Hellkite. I probably should have once again swung into Trevor at that point, and used the activated ability to destroy some permanents, probably around three, to mess with his stuff. He probably would have saved the Mirage Mirror by turning it into a land, but it still would have cost him some swords. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.